have you ever tried to be like someone else that you admire, maybe uh, appreciate and value some of the special ways in which they do things? I was that way. My mother, Miss Hostess with the most, is she has this heart of hospitality. And when I got married, I thought, well, hey, I'm my mother's daughter. It should be easy breezy. But that was not the case. And trying to be like someone I'm not brought only frustration. And uh, thanks to friends and mentors, they began to awaken and stir within me. And even as I drew closer to God, he began to unpack who I was, what my gifts are, and that it's wonderful that you admire these attributes, characteristics, and you appreciate that in other people, and celebrate that in them. But celebrate who you are. Tonight, I want to talk about know your why. Now, you might think, hey, that sounds familiar. Last week, we talked about what is your why. Hey, and if you weren't with us last week, go to our website. We have it uploaded so you can listen to that message as well. But let's uh, unpack that truth, knowing your why. But before I do, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have a plan, you have a purpose, you have a hope for each of us. That you don't want us to be anyone other than who you created us to be. And with the help of your Holy Spirit, reveal that truth. Lead us into that revelation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I love this scripture in Psalm 1611. And it has been my go-to and I, I hope that it will be a word of encouragement for you tonight. It says this, You direct me in the path that leads to a beautiful life. As I walk with you, the pleasures are never ending. And I know true joy and contentment. Are you getting this pattern? He will direct us in these paths that will lead to this beautiful life. And as we walk with him, as we walk with Almighty God, he declares that, that the pleasures that he provides are never ending. And that we can know, hey, there's that word, know. Know your why that we would know true joy and contentment. You know, knowing our why, it's not enough to know what our gifts, talents, passions, dreams are all about. It's about knowing and entering in to who we are in Him. I am quite the flower person. If you were to come to my home, you'd see flowers outside and flowers inside. I love seeing the fruit and, and the outcome of the blooms that are provided through these various uh, varieties of flowers uh, that I'm drawn to uh, having in my yard seasonally throughout the year. You and I, we bloom as well. There's fruit and there's uniqueness. We're, we're kind of like the fingerprint. There's not two alike. And you and I are unique, we're different, and we're one of a kind. But to unpack that truth and have it revealed to us, we need to know the one who created us. And he will make known those unique qualities that sometimes might be buried deep inside and are just waiting to be revealed. God, he's placed in each of us a longing to know our meaning. He wants us to realize that there's more to this life. And he gives us this desire to search out and be able to discover what brings fulfillment. Whether it's with individuals that we share our life with or maybe in the workplace, maybe in our home, our community. But he puts that longing in us. You've heard me quote this. We are encouraged to ask and it shall be given, to seek and we will find, and to knock and have that door open. So he has uniquely gifted us 
with so much, but often we need him to reveal and to lead us. And with the help of his Holy Spirit, he will guide us into the truth, the revealed uh, discoveries that God has prepared for us. And we're each able to provide a distinct contribution to the world around us. And he wants us to understand that no two people are alike. So he wants us to celebrate us, to celebrate who we are. And tonight, I just encourage you to feel celebrated. You are appreciated and valued. And we're so glad you could join us. And let's give a shout out to Pat Dinkins, who's facilitating tonight, our very own Tammy Franklin. And she is leading a virtual prayer walk this week. So look into the chat for more details and information so you can be involved each day as we uh, purposely and intentionally pray the love scriptures and to realize and know that his love will never fail. And for our very own Ann Sellers as well, who brings in words of encouragement and support to each of you. So let them know that you're on right now. Let them know if you're watching this later on, who was on. Let us know your prayers. Let us know what you got out of the truth, the topics that we're unpacking tonight. So God first wants us to know that he loves us. It's in that love that never fails. It brings down the walls of hurt, of brokenness, or how about the lies that the enemy might give and provide constantly that we are insignificant, that why would God have something for us? We're nothing, we're no one, but we know we are significant. And so his love, it unpacks and reveals the truth of his great uh, vision and purpose that he has for each of his children, you and I. And in that, he wants us to be known by him. I knew uh, my husband and I've known him. We've been married 41 years, but it is a marvel to me how that we're still discovering something new about each other. Maybe something new in the past, the present, or maybe a dream of the future. And when we spend time with our Father God, He does the same. He wants us to be known uh, and to have us know Him and to realize just His desire to know us, to have us share our dreams, to share our hurts, disappointments, and to have this exchange of conversation. When I was with my boss today, we were trying to figure out some unsettling and uncertain times that we're in. How are we going to uh, navigate through all these roadblocks that we're faced with? And as we were exchanging ideas, as we were talking uh, in, some people call it blue sky, whatever you want to, uh, you know, put as a label for that. But as we began to have this dialogue, pretty soon this idea just, it, it settled. And I was like, yeah, that works. And then pretty soon another idea came up. And before long, we had a plan. But we have a God, just like Psalm 16, verse 11, reminds us that he's directing our steps that lead to this beautiful life and that there are pleasures that are never ending with him. And he wants us to know true joy and contentment. That happens when we have those conversations, as we give him the whole of our care, as we roll uh, and just uh, give the burdens and cast them over to him, as we release the debt, maybe of hurt, unforgiveness. Maybe we let go and then allow God to fill those spaces within us to truly define who we are 
and no longer allowing the lies of the enemies or, or the uh, words of individuals that have said things that have hurt us. We allow God to define us. And as we know him, as we allow uh, this intimate relationship with him to grow, I think of the scripture in John 15, 5 that says, I am the vine. Jesus was saying this. I am the vine. You are the branches. And if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. So as we are uh, uh, knowing him, as we are in this relationship with him, he stirs, he awakens, and he brings about magnificent fruit in our life. And that is what I want to unpack for the rest of our time together. So as we search after our why, it does require a good amount of faith and even risk. I remember God was uh, stirring in my heart that he wanted me to speak to people. And I'm like, that is not going to happen. I'm shy. I'm timid. I, I don't even feel confident around people. But as I was intimate with God during this time of, of prayer, he began to reveal who I was in him. And it took faith because the just shall live by faith. And it took a risk to do it even afraid to obey God's truth and his word, even though it does not make sense. Even though I don't really see it, but I believe it. And by believing, I will see it manifested in my life. And so it might feel uncomfortable for a little while, but it's amazing how things shift. For with God, all things are possible to us who believe. However, if we trust the one who is calling to trust our God, he will make sure to help us in the journey of life. He'll help us navigate uh, through the twists and turns. And knowing our why, our passion, our purpose, it does shift. It will change over time. At one time, my husband was in the military, so I was a military dependent. Now, we're nearing retirement life, and we're grandparents. It's a whole different season. We're living and have lived in a community for some time, when before we were always moving, and I felt like there was no place uh, that we consistently would have a commitment or relationships or, or felt that we could have an impact because we'd be in a few weeks and then gone. You and I, he wants us to understand that he calls us by name, that he makes straight before us the roads and he will also make clear the paths if we will only let him. It is when we surrender, when we trust in him completely and lean not to our own understanding, he will make straight and plain the path before you. He will allow us to understand and know our why. So my first uh, value, our first takeaway for tonight is this. Your why, it gives you a purpose. Ephesians 2.10 says, for we are his workmanship, his masterwork, a work of art, created in Christ, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, and ready to be used for good works, which God prepared for us beforehand taking paths which he set so that we would walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us. He gives us a purpose. We are his masterpiece. And he has paths that will bring about good works, that will bring about a transformation to every life we have the pleasure of, of being with. I was sharing with my daughter, she has family, actually it's her husband's cousin, who he hasn't seen in years. They have been married for many years and they had never met her or her children. But God laid on their heart to invite them from Maine. She's a, the cousin is a single mom, 
to invite them to come down and host them in their home. And I was telling my daughter today, what a wonderful opportunity, because it was in one of those kinds of visits that I came to know Christ. My grandmother was just being herself, fulfilling her why, her passion, her purpose. And it was in this life that she lived, this peace, this fruit, this overflowing characteristics that she was just in, uh, in as she was walking with God, I benefited from. And it made me want to know more. And I told my daughter, I said, sweetheart, I'm just praying that this time that they're in your home will awaken a hunger and a thirst to know him more. So you shouldn't, uh, each of us, our why, it shouldn't cause us stress. Our why should motivate and inspire us to do better and to become a better person. When we know who we are, that we are his masterpiece, that he's created us for good works, for, for a purpose, then yes, there might be challenges, but there is just like the opening scripture I shared with you at the very start of tonight. There are pleasures that are never ending. He gives us this ability to, to press in and press on. And we're not stressed out. Now we might uh, find that we have to overcome and be victorious. But the beauty is this. His revealed truth, it fuels us. It gives us the fuel to be able to take us wherever we must go. I love the phrase, when God guides, come on, finish it in the chat, he provides, right? So for each of us, we need to embrace our why. We need to learn to love ourselves because we can't love others unless we love ourselves. And we need to love who we are. Now for me, I tried to be like my mom and then I'd, I'd meet someone else and uh, I try to be like them. I, I tried to sew and, and, and do many uh, creative, artsy things. And, and I did it for a time, but it wasn't my true fit. And it was as I abided in him, he began to stir what it is I love to do. And I love to plan. I enjoy organizing. I, I just love thinking of creative ideas to create a memory and a remembrance. And some of you have benefited from those, right? And so that embracing my why, it may be different from those around me, but I found a purpose, a joy that fueled me to uh, create these opportunities even more. So when you are pursuing and discovering what and who you are, your what and who you are in him, he will uh, not only guide, as I shared just a moment ago, but he will provide. He will provide the skills, the abilities needed to fulfill the purpose, the why that he has imparted in you. So your why is what helps you. It's like a close friend. It will guide you even in the darkest of days. You might be wondering, it's like me on, a, on this one road, I was taking my husband to Bethesda for um, a late night MRI. And we were heading to the hospital, Walter Reed, but there were no lights on GW Parkway. It was very dark, but we had a purpose and we knew we had to make this appointment in a timely manner. And it just kept us going, even in the rain. Even though I had to put that windshield wiper on high, I forged on and eventually we hit uh, the beltway and then we were only four stops away. But there are times our why will help us to pursue and press on even when it seems dark and the, the path is not clearly defined. But he says he will order our steps, right? He'll make them sure and as we abide in him, Jesus, he is the light and he will guide and direct us in the way that we should go. So 
Our why will give us purpose and our why will also power us through. Just as I said, think of the scripture in Proverbs 4, 25 through 27. It says, set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose. Look straight ahead and ignore life's distractions. Watch where you're going and stick to the path of truth and the road will be safe and smooth before you. And don't allow yourself to be sidetracked, not even for a moment or take the detour that leads to darkness. Your why, your purpose, your plan, it, it will light up the way. It will be God Almighty that will, with his eye of counsel upon you, he will reveal, like that still small voice, he will reveal that you're doing this. This is the right way. Stay on it. Don't get sidetracked. Sidetrack. Don't let life's distractions steer you from your purpose and ignore all that would take you away from the purpose and the why that God has stirred and awakened in your heart. And your why not only powers you through, but it helps you when you're tempted to quit or people will tell you, well, this is too hard. You might as well just I mean, what's the point? It's not going to make a difference. There are all kinds of people that will sometimes discourage you on the very pathway that God has led you to go on. I remember when my husband decided to go into law school. It didn't make sense. He was a pilot. Why, why is he switching careers? But something inside him told him this was the season. This was the path that God had. Of course, I had to pray about it and, and just get alongside and unite with him. When I told my husband, I felt that God was shifting. I had been so involved, and I still am involved in my church home. But when he laid on my heart, and, and when God awakened um, a vision of Cindy Dennis Ministries, and I shared with my husband, he said, sweetheart, it I agree. It, it doesn't make sense, but I have a peace. And I know this is God opening up doors that no man can shut. When God just encouraged me to, to reach out and to pray through my neighborhood, and as I've gotten to meet some of my neighbors, there's such a connection because I feel like I've known them for, for months because I've been praying for each home, each door, I have passed each vehicle that is parked in front of these townhouses. You and I, we have a plan, we have a purpose, and he will power us through. So your why is what energizes the whole pursuit of your impossible. It might look impossible for man, but with God, all things are possible. And then lastly, your why can bring you joy. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3 says, let us run the race that we can run with patience, our eyes fixed on Jesus, who's the source and the goal of our faith. And for in himself, he endured the cross. And though nothing of its shame, thought nothing of its shame because of the joy he knew would follow his suffering. And he's now seated at the right hand of God, right there at, on next to God. And it says at the right hand, think constantly of him enduring all that sinful men would say against him. And you will not lose, come on, listen, you will not lose your purpose or your courage. You see, when we run the race for the joy that is set before us, we will not lose our purpose or our courage. He will give us a heart and he has placed within it passion and dreams and desires. And we cannot uh, lose that passion if we are staying connected with God, when we're abiding in him because God is passionate right? The word says his, his love is everlasting. He is 
full of emotions and we're created in his image. So as we stay connected with him, as we abide in him, he fortifies, he energizes us in life's journey. And so when you're plugged into God, it's like being plugged into a power supply. You get more passionate, more powered up, the more you're in his presence. Think about the Greek word enthusiasm. It comes from entheos, which means in God. Huh. So the closer we get to God, in God, enthusiastic, it means more energy, vitality, passion that we will have for life. Reminds me how Jesus himself in John 10, 10 says, I've come that you might have life, enjoy life, and have it more abundantly. Because he's inviting us to accept his free gift, his invitation, because he's, like Revelation says, he's knocking at the door. He wants us to invite him in. He's a gentleman. He will not just barge in, but he wants to awaken a passion, an energy, a revelation of an awareness of your why. But that only happens when we let him in, when we have a conversation and a dialogue. And when you get bored and apathetic, it happens when you're disconnected from the very power source of your life. So tonight, let me leave with these words. Get closer to God and open up your heart to him. For he's standing, as we often hear this scripture in Revelations 3.20, Behold, I'm standing at the door and knocking. Tonight, I feel like some of you just need a word of encouragement of knowing he's there. He will not leave you nor forsake you, but he's standing at the door of your heart. And he's saying, will you let me in? Will you give me the whole of your care, your concern? Will you take up my cross and pray and give uh, by being mindful of the plans that he has for you? And as you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, be assured tonight all things will be added unto you. So get closer to God. Understand that he loves you. Know this, that he will ensure that you have the faith. He imparts the faith so that you can live this life to its fullness. And he will inspire you each step of the way. Now let's remember that scripture, Psalm 1611. He will direct us in the path that will lead to a beautiful life. He will walk, as we walk with him, he will help us to enjoy pleasures that are never ending. And my blessing and declaration to you is this, that you might know true joy and contentment. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And hey, participate in this week's virtual prayer walk. Want to know more information? So glad you asked. Go to www.sydneydennis.org and find those details on our website. Good night, everyone. Thank you for being with us.